we film a few of these in a row. And uh, no. yeah, I know, I know, spoiling like the magic. It's Chad. It, I know. <laughs> it's, I've clearly gone away from the studio, slept, and come back for another day in these jeans. But that means that this episode now is probably going to be like 12 weeks into the future. Yeah. What do you think the world's going to be like then? Like, because it, it feels like we're on the cusp of a change right now. <laughs> for the worse? Well, <laughs> well, that's the question, isn't it? So what I'm going to talk about, mm -hmm. some of this. Right. Col columns with content. Columns with content. So imagine you, you needed to do this, you wanted to do this, three equal columns like with a gap in between them. Mm -hmm. There's a few ways of doing that now. Like we've, we've got a, a variety of different layout. Want to use CSS. block layout, grid layout, flex layout. They will all do the trick. Exactly. Uh, so I wanted to look at a couple of ways of doing it that, that look kind of similar. So mm. we've got this one. Yeah, mm -hmm. display grid, auto columns, flow, whatever, gap. And then there's this one. Do we even need the auto flow? Um, oh, I can't remember. It's one of those, <laughs> do you know what? With this and flex, I always just put it in because it, I can never not? remember what the default is. So I just yeah. uh, tappy, tappy, tappy. There we go. So there's there's two things here. And like I, I have sometimes gone for the first one over the second one because it feels more versatile. Doesn't the second one have three columns? Well, yes. And you would have noticed in the first slide, there were three columns. Yes. Sorry, I, for some reason, I read columns. I was like, oh, they have to go horizontally. No, you're thinking that, of that, rows, mate. Yeah, that's rows. <laughs> but yeah, that's <laughs> yes. I, the, the first one, you could have as many columns as you want, right? Mm -hmm. It just sort of mm -hmm. figures stuff out. But I think the second one is the right choice. Second one? Yeah. And it's to do with how, partially how to do with the browser, how the browser parses content and what mm -hmm. happens while the content is loading. So say we've got this back to our divs from before. Yeah. Um, is the next thing broke? No, deliberately, because I'm going to oh. introduce this in character by character. And the top half is going to be uh, what the parser receives. And the bottom half is going to be what the parser creates. The, the, the DOM the that DOM. emerges from. Yes, OK. Exactly. So, because the browsers can create DOM while they're downloading HTML. Mm -hmm. So we start off, dot, 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 nothing. Nothing. Nothing happening at this point. And you know why? I mean, you know why. I do. I, I actually, I don't know I, if I know why. I have a hunch. Go on. Hey, what? Boop. There hey. we go. Yeah. There we go. And that's when the parser goes, right, OK, we've got a div. I know what all the attributes are. Mm. And this is the point it will go and create that element and stick it on the page. We don't have an end tag yet, but we do in the DOM because there's no such thing as an end tag in the DOM. That's just the no, visual representation of a DOM. The node exists. The node, it exists. And the pointer is inside that node. Because as we create more stuff, we've just added some white space. Mm -hmm. um, but nothing else has changed. But once again, we haven't created an element yet because we haven't reached the. And on we go. We've now got a div inside that div. And so on and so on. We start adding content. More divs appear. So you end up with a situation where, as the page is downloading, these divs are, can mm. appear one by one. A lot of it depends on the, the speed of the connection, what else is going on. But that is where we see the difference between these two yeah. bits of layout. Because this one will load in like this. Bop. Bop. There we go. Whereas this one will load in like this. Now, which one is better, Jake? The first one was better, wasn't it? Yeah. Because it, I was it, actually going to argue that I like this better, like not in terms of how it loaded in, but the way I declared, because it doesn't tie me to a specific layout. If I wanted to add a column, I can just add it in the markup. And that is nice developer experience. But this is another example of where developer experience comes at the cost of a good user experience. Exactly. And it's, and it's easy to see some content like this and go, well, you know, is the browser really going to Render it halfway through. And yes. it, it, I mean, it can. That's the thing. <laughs> it, you know, you can say, well, probably not. Fingers crossed. But that's it tends to be a bad way to develop Literally, software. Before we started doing this episode, I was reading an article on my phone on good internets here in the office, and there was a tweet embed that wasn't loading very fast, and it moved the entire page in a weird, awkward 
meaningless state almost. And so uh, that was happens. probably down to JavaScript this time. Uh, and, but that could happen here as well. Like one of those columns could be added later with JavaScript. If your middle column has a lot of content, which is usually the column which does, uh, then there's more chance of the browser doing a, a mid rendering. It'll be quite busy until it gets to the end of the middle column node and then does the right node and then suddenly everything gets squished, which is also an expensive layout if the middle column is big. So absolutely, it adds up. And also, if you have a streaming templating language, which sounds like a fancy term, but what I really mean is PHP. Like if you do a database lookup in the middle of that column, then there's a point where you're going to add more milliseconds of server time. Yeah. And it will encourage the browser to flush and like, and render. And render. Yeah. And this is the kind of thing that you're not going to see on your local development environment. Nope. It's, it's a real gotcha that like, you really need to turn all of the settings down to the minimum just to see this happen. And it doesn't mean someone will have to be on that slow connection in order to see it, because it comes down to chance, which is a problem. But as you say, this is something that people will they'll, they'll avoid uh, doing this for the reason you said. Like, oh, I don't want to specify three columns. Um, because what if I have another layout that has four columns? I'm going to have to do another class, mm -hmm. whole other thing. And like, you know, however many columns I'm going to have, I'm going to have columns two, columns three, columns four. When I could just have one, that seemed to work fine. Um, I would say the, the, the workaround for that would be to do something like this. Props, 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 props. Because like, at this point, you probably know how many columns you're going to have. And grid has repeat. So this is literally grid has repeat. There we go. There's very little arguments we made that this is in any way worth. Yeah, I, and I think some people would see the inline style and go, ooh, inline style's bad. But we're using it in a semantic way this time. So even if yeah. you're against it um, in terms of inline styling, we are using it more as, in a semantic way here. And I think this kind of gets you the best of both worlds, it gets you that reusable class, but um, yeah, it, it's, it, it gets you that nice rendering and as if well. If you want really badly, you could make your build system generate that style tag for you so you don't have to count yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> three, I mean, oh, I mean with I guess with you've re got to get past one and two before you get to three. Yeah. I mean, I, but I guess with, with you know, React, Preact components, that's actually quite easy to do. You, you, yeah. you know your children. You can literally count them and add that number to an inline style tag. It might actually be. Quite, you don't even need a proper build system, I guess. Yeah, so, and I can see this happening if you've got like a series of menu items, uh, hor like horizontal menu items, where yeah. like if you're an admin, it's got two more. Yeah. But by the time you're, you're creating that element, you, you've got the thing, no, is admin, all right, I, I know how many things yeah. I'm going to create, I'll add that, add that number in. Um, I would say grid, if you're using grid template columns, doesn't mean that you've solved this problem. No. Because there are values you can put in grid template columns that do depend on the content. And that's really what we're talking about here. The, the difference is, is the layout being defined by the CSS? Or is it being defined by the CSS plus the, the content, plus the HTML? And where when you're saying you know, 1FR, 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 that's the CSS saying, there is going to be free columns here. Whereas if the auto version, it's like, I don't know, let's see what's in there. Yeah. And that's when you create the, the layout problems. But here we've got some values, max content, min content, auto fit content. Auto and fit content just derive from max content and min content in various ways. And it creates that problem here because it's essentially saying, I want this column to be related to what's in it. Yeah. And sometimes that's OK, especially if it's the first column, because it doesn't matter so much. But if it's the last column, then you're still going to have that thing where everything's wide. And then the last thing comes in, it, it doesn't know how wide it's going to be until it's there. I mean, this and is what, what also what they mean that uh, both Grid and I think also Flex are multi-pass layouts mm. because what they give you can depend on the element's intrinsic size, as it's called. And that sometimes means that it has to start over because now that it knows the intrinsic size of a last element, it actually affects how the first couple elements need to be laid out to make it all work, and it has to start over. Yes. And then maybe it wasn't the last element. Another one comes, and it has to start all over again, which makes it sound really bad. It's not like you should use grid, you should use flex. Absolutely. And, but it's something to be mindful of. And that they have these capabilities just opens up a whole a bunch of new problems that we need to care about. I'd like to talk more about flex. But first, here's, a, here's an interesting fact that I didn't know. What does 1FR mean? That I was literally contemplating whether I should ask this, because I was thinking about it. If, one, if repeat 3 1FR actually is always a three column layout of equal size, because I don't think it is in all cases. I was trying to remember, because it, 1FR means for it's the free space. 
And you can yes. distribute the free space with these weights. So if you have one of R, one of R, one of R, everyone gets one third of the free space. Yes. If you do two, one, one, the first one gets twice as much as the other two. But it's free space. And so I was wondering if the, that basically is how much space is left after I lay out the elements with their intrinsic size, I guess. So if I, and text, I think, can be squished to almost any arbitrary size. So it's not a good example. With images, for example, I wonder if it would be different. You're, you're, you're kind of right. You're kind of right. So here's the deal. Um, although it, it does matter with text. So here we've got three equal columns because we've got one FR. Mm -hmm. um, but whoop, this happens. So now that first column has to be that size because it can't wrap that text because it's all right. one word. And now it's become bigger, and the other two have had to squash as a result. And it's not down to the free space distribution. It's down to a very, very weird edge case in how 1FR is defined. Because 1FR okay. means they should be the same size, but 1FR doesn't mean 1FR when it's in grid template columns or in repeat. What 1FR actually means is min content 1FR. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah. How It's really weird. When I saw this, it sort of blew my mind. Because uh, you could put 0 in there, in which case it does this. <laughs> I would, if, if you wanted to have actual equal spacing, we just use calc 100 divided by number of columns. Um, the, OK, so the difference between 1FR and percentages mm -hmm. is that the, uh, if you use percentages, then the gap is going to add to that. You would have to manually deduct the gap. I would have to deduct the gap. You're right. Whereas with FR, it's it's the fraction after the gaps uh, all done for also, you. So, it, so does FR actually stand for free space? Uh, free but, fraction. But, but saying, fraction. It's a, oh, fraction. But, but, yeah. OK, so it, it actually doesn't have anything to do with the available space. After all, it's literally the space that is being laid out. It's a fraction, fraction of that, that group, with the exception of it being min content. I misunderstood something. It's, well, you're. <laughs> Your uh, definition is very closer to Flexbox, I'd say. Um, probably, yeah. Which we should probably talk about, because it is entirely content driven. There's no way of defining your flexing up front. Like, it's, like, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's always going to be driven by content. And this makes it uh, better and worse. But it, it's, <laughs> I would, yes, OK. It's bad for page layout. Yeah. Because it's always going to have that layout issue. If you're, if you're doing any kind of flexing within your Flexbox, and if you're not uh, while you're using it, you are going to end up with this issue or the potential of this issue where things shift around as they load. Um, in some ways, table layout can be better. Because table layout is a grid, right? And, and yeah. you can use, I mean, even in IE8, you can use divs, but use CSS to give them table-like properties. Yeah. And you can use fixed table layout to say, right, whatever the first uh, row is that's going to be fixed for the for the rest, and and you can get a more stable re render than you can with Flexbox, the much newer layout system. Um, it's got to the point where I only use Flexbox for things that Grid cannot do, and those things do exist. We, yeah, wrapping, yeah, like uh, multiple rows where the rows are independently laid out because they are supposed to not look like a grid. Yeah, and grid, grid is, is very bad. much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, grid is the two-dimensional layout. And sometimes, like if you've got a a set of sponsor logos or something uh, awesome. that have different sizes, and you want them to be centered and have a gap between them, and horizontally and vertically, but you don't want them necessarily in a grid. You just want them horizontally a horizontal layout. masonry layout. Yeah, and that's that's that, yeah. There's a good uh, flexbox thing, right? Yeah, that's that's what flexbox is for. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how the comments for this video go. Because you know, I'm telling people, don't use Flexbox for your page layout. You know, Use Grid, because it's better at this. It has these better layout semantics. Because all of this content that I've just been talking about, this is old content, because I wrote this in 2014. And people got very angry about it. it you know, I'll put a link to this in the description. Go and have a look at the comments. People are telling me I know nothing about anything, and I'm stupid, <laughs> and I should be sad and ashamed. Wrong. They're not wrong, but about this, they are wrong. <laughs> like, I am stupid and should be ashamed, but not for this. Like, this, this is Because when I wrote this, I, I had talked to, like, you know, I'd come up with this theory. I thought, well, this seems bad for all the reasons I've talked mm. about. Um, and I, I asked them, I was like, does this is this right? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Flexbox is bad for this. We we need grid. 
But I guess in 2014, the story on Grid was very different because it barely existed. I guess it was the time where we had a V1 of Grid or the V0 or whatever in IE and nobody else had anything. So it's... It, it's exactly what it's exactly that it was only in IE at the time. Yeah. And this blog post, they, the examples don't work anymore because it was based on the old <laughs> IE grid examples. And the reason I, I wrote this post to make the the case for grid is because at the time browsers were dragging their heels a little bit around the grid implementation because we we'd done Flexbox not that long before, and I think the the perception was, look, people have been dealing with floats forever. Yeah, for you know a decade, and we've just given them a new layout system. Come on, that must be good for another ten years <laughs> or something. Uh, so this was really my case for like, no, no, this is this is not good for this. Like, and I think people were getting angry because they were like, yeah, but it's so much better than what we had. I'm like, yeah, yeah, but 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 but, but. <laughs> we need something. Everything starts to look like a nail when you have a hammer. Yep. So this whole episode is just like, uh, I think you'll find uh, I was right, oh, was right? Yeah. or maybe I'm not. Like <laughs> maybe the comments are gonna be like. No, you're still wrong, Jake. Shut up. We're going to continue to use Flexbox. Also, can I just say, I, the first time I've seen posted on the 5th of February, 2014, only five months after the previous post. <laughs> That's pretty much the cadence. <laughs> <laughs> Going up to like 10 like years. Only. only. It's only five months. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good going. I'm going to hit the 10 year anniversary of this, you know, my blog soon. And it's like, yep, 11 posts or whatever. <laughs> it's pretty much the same cadence as our podcast. Pretty much. Subscribe to our podcast. I this could be completely tone deaf by the time it goes out. It could be. That's as with all of our episodes. <laughs> <laughs> it could be terrible by the time it goes out. It probably is. <laughs>